Hello and welcome to Blockchain Gaming World with me, John Jordan. And we are having our monthly recap of uh, what's going on with the uh, most popular blockchain games, at least in terms of on-chain activity. So this is all data taken from uh, DAP Radar, all public data. Um, as we can kind of see, uh, the sort of continuation of uh, Alien Worlds as this sort of outlier of uh, blockchain game activity uh, continues. I mean, that's been the case for a couple of months now. Uh, we can uh, clearly see now that that the uh, there has been a kind of a peak of daily activity, and um, it's sort of declined from that peak, although still um, incredibly high, running at around two hundred forty thousand uh, unique active wallets a day. We can look into a bit more detail um, uh, about that later on in the video. Um, we can see um, <laughs> difficult to see on this scale um, some of the other games. Upland still doing um, fairly well in second place, and then a bunch of other ones um, kind of further down. Um, we can look at this on a, on a log graph, so that this basically just um, changes the vertical scale. So we're not looking at a, a linear scale, we're looking at a, a log scale. So uh, these, um, you can see it moves from 100 to 1,000 to 10,000 to 100,000. So that's how log scale works, I guess, as we all know from pandemic studies these days. Um, and this is a way of just sort of um, you know, flattening out the scale. So, so we can kind of see um, these very different uh, kind of um, activity numbers uh, using the same graph. Um, so we can see here, Act Infinity um, bubbling under, bubbling around kind of a thousand daily active unique wallets. Um, Act Infinity now has its Ronin sidechain up and running. So um, a lot of the activity is now happening on the Ronin sidechain, which we uh, can't track at the moment. Um, so this is just looking at what's going on on Ethereum. So this is just people still trading the NFTs um, on Ethereum. Um, some, uh, I think quite a lot of the, from, from looking at what's going on there, quite a lot of the axes have gone over to Ronin sidechain. But there is... We can see there has been an uptick in activity um, on Ethereum, um, so uh, a couple of thousand now. But uh, yeah, it's not historically high compared to where it has been, um, even in 2021. Um, prospectors, we'll have a look at in a bit more detail. Um, hard to see on this log graph. There has been a fairly substantial rise in user um, activity, daily activity on prospectors. That runs across two chains, so it has a little two there. Runs across Wax and IOS. Um, Splinterlands, um, still very steady at its sort of, sort of 7,000. Daily actually unique wallets with these little spikes every two weeks for the um, for the uh, kind of end of the challenges, and then we can see Upland here, and then Alien World. Um, it's probably a bit more sensible to have a look at um, the <laughs> the rest of the games with Alien Worlds taken out, just because it's such, such a um, weird um, kind of outlier um, in a positive sense, I guess. But um, so here we can see in a bit more detail on a linear scale, linear, linear vertical scale, um, daily actually unique wallets here. So. We have actually infinity, so you can see, you know, there is this big spike here. Um, it's not as big as it has been in the past, but, but uh, you know, from, from a very low level here. So we've also seen recently in the last kind of two weeks, uh, gas prices on Ethereum have sort of gone back to some sort of normality. Um, in a sense, they're normally under 100 uh, guay now. Um, so that obviously when gas prices go down, that tends to encourage activity on Ethereum based uh, dApps and games of which actually infinity is, is one. Respecters, we can kind of see this this steady climb here. So. Prospectors um, has been around for a, a, you know it was about a year and a half now, um, and it's just had this very steady activity. Um, but now we've seen this sort of uptick. Um, Splinterlands again, um, you know it, there is there is there is growth there, but it's but it's um, it, it's not really uh, kind of um, extraordinary, I suppose. Um, so Upland has has been this big success story. Um, you know it's been overshadowed by Alien Worlds definitely. Uh, but it started the year, uh, you know, a couple of thousand daily actually unique wallets, uh, broke through 10,000 in at the end of February, broke through 20,000 in uh, April, um, so it seems to have peaked just under 30,000. Um, and you can see actually as it, as it sort of goes up, the volatility, so the, the, chain, the daily changes, this is all daily active unique wallets, um, goes up and down quite a lot. So we're kind of, you know, we're moving here, you know, um, you know 5,000, 6,000, 7,000 daily active wallets a, a day. So I guess that, that sort of makes sense as your audience grows bigger, um, or, or I guess as you start to do more marketing, you have sort of people coming in um, and they're not playing the next day and you kind of have these retention, um, typical sort of retention mechanics. But we can kind of see that, that they, um, there's been a peak here, maybe 26, 27,000 sort of thing. And, and, and then there's been sort of over the last, uh, or during, during May, there's sort of been a decline. Um, I guess if you look at the average of these, we're probably talking about 20, 23, 24,000, but we still have these um, these upticks. So again, I don't, I haven't, play, I haven't looked at Upland for a while. There could be some um, kind of weekly retention models going in here that, that would that would kind of 
mean that these days um, are certain, certain days just have less activity because there's not so much going on in the game. Um, whereas uh, you know you, you sort of get this big kind of recoil. Um, so you know, our plans is still definitely uh, you know a success story in, in number two position, um, but it's not just had had you know the growth doesn't and, and I guess we see this with all products growth just doesn't continue as a rocket ship. At some point it peaks and and, and there's some sort of falling away and then maybe recovery and, and we'll see what happens. Um, so I have a bit more on Alien Worlds. So this is just uh, looking at the daily activity. So we've sort of seen this before, but on, on, on this, you know, its own graph, so the scale doesn't look so um, uh, kind of weird. Uh, so we can see sort of the, the first the first kind of you know, very uh, steady growth, and then this kind of accelerated growth to a peak um, in February, and then a sharp falling away, um, and, and then a more kind of steady falling away. So say we're about 240,000 daily actually unique wallets here. The big issue we've always had for Alien Worlds is how much of this is bots. And this particular drop off here was when um, uh, the I think it's actually the Wax blockchain, which Alien Worlds runs on rather than Alien Worlds. They bought in a recapture um, because they were they were there. They worried the blockchain was getting congested with all this kind of what we assume is bot activity. So this is this big 50 percent drop sort of thing here. Um, and since then, we've seen a kind of steady decline, although there's not they don't use recapture anymore. So that's sort of been taken out. I assume that's because the developer is doing its own um, kind of anti bot stuff as well. The other thing to note is is um, the reason that you would be doing lots of bots in here is to mine out the currency that you can then sell on. Um, obviously, the price of cryptocurrencies in general has, have, has declined a lot, so potentially that makes Alien Worlds less kind of lucrative for um, um, people who, who want to mine out the currency. Um, so, um, and and it, even though the price of all cryptos kind of fallen, the price of the Alien World trillion has fallen sort of sort of uh, more, which is sort of what, what we expected. It was, it was a sort of an over speculated um, product uh, token. Now here we have daily transactions. Um, again, we sort of it's, it's, it's sort of a bit different actually because we sort of see an early spike. So this is the number of transactions um, going through the smart contract. We see a big falling away when the recapture comes in, but then we see this you know a fairly steady kind of increase. Um, so here, here we see a big falling away and and sort of a plateauing, a bit of a decline still. In terms of that transactions, we kind of see this big falling away and and it's still building up. So it's almost not quite back to where it was, but um, but you know not actually not far off. Um, you know th there's it's only like two, two or three days that have had more daily transactions um, than, uh, the, the, you know, there's only a couple of days that have had more daily transactions than what we're seeing now, and those were these big spikes. So um, that's interesting. And if we kind of put the two together, we can look at the average transactions per wallet. So we have these big spikes up here. Recapture comes in, drives it down to about getting about 20. So this is 20 transactions per wallet. Obviously, this is an average. So some people doing one or two a day, some people doing more than that. We, we can see, you know, this, this is now doubled. To me, um, again, this sort of suggests uh, bot activity. Um, uh, so it sort of depends a little bit on on um, the, the better NFT, NFTs you have um, uh, equipped, then the longer the um, cooldown time when you've done a mining transaction. So basically, you, you you mine out some tokens and you have to wait until you can mine again. Um, and the better NFTs you have, the longer the period of time uh, you have to wait. Um, so that sort of there there is every every sort of account will have a limit. If if you're using very uh, weak NFTs, um, it might be like a couple of minutes. If you're using very strong ones, it might be a couple of hours. Um, so so there's quite a lot of complexity in this average. Um, but this to me tends to suggest kind of bots are finding their way. Um, there's still quite a lot of bots. I just don't think human beings would be would be tapping um, twenty times a day. Could be wrong on that one. Um, I know from my sort of personal experience, um, you know, I, I I probably with my um i could i could with my setup i could be probably doing kind of 30 if i stayed awake all, all, all night and kept tapping i could probably do 30 transactions per wallet for the nfts i've got equipped um but obviously i don't do that because i don't, I'm, don't stay awake and do it so i probably do about less than 10 a day so um so it's interesting to see that rising uh, and finally have a quick look at prospectus so this is kind of one interesting thing so we saw this already that it used to be that sort of prospectus on wax and prospectus on eos were basically had the same um very similar sort of audiences so 1500 daily active unique wallets um, the EOS what side dropped away and it sort of picked back up sort of to where it was at the start of the year. Um, but we've seen WAX, um, the WAX activity has stayed the same, then then sort of increased, gone back down again, then we've seen a very strong increase. So we've gone from about 1,500 um, daily active unique wallets to kind of 4,500, so, so it's um, increased to 200%. Um, this, I would definitely say, is is uh, because of Alien, um, Alien World. So that's brought people to the Wax blockchain, maybe for the first time they've been playing um, Alien Worlds, they've been looking around for other things. Prospectus is a sort of similar, similar to some degree, you don't sort of mine tokens in the same way. Um, it's actually probably a much more complex game in terms of the sort of uh, meta. 
um, on it. Um, but I think, you know, in terms of the, the, the tens of thousands of people playing uh, Alien Worlds, we're not, really, we're not, not seeing a, a, an enormous number um, kind of come over to also play Prospectors. But we are seeing some, uh, you know, a few thousand. So I think that's, that's pretty clear. Um, always being careful about causation and correlation, of course. Um, so anyway, thanks um, for uh, watching the video. This is Blockchain Gaming World where every month we look at uh, some figures around what's going on in, in terms of on-chain activity. Obviously, there's lots of off-chain activity that we can't measure, but um, try and keep an idea on what's going on. And lots of other videos as well we do about blockchain games. So if you're interested in this stuff, please subscribe. But thanks for watching and see you again soon.